Hi, I'm Justin Kelly. I wrote and directed the film I Am Michael, uh, starring James Franco and Zachary Quinto, and it is uh, a very fascinating true story about a gay activist who becomes an anti-gay Christian pastor. <laughs> um, welcome to Berlin Alla and uh, to the Teddy Awards, to your film is extremely relevant to, to this uh, award, the Teddy Award. Um, and my first question would be, why were you interested in that kind of like topic of religion and sexuality? What drew you to, to that film? That well, my, my first interest in the story was, it had to do with uh, like identity politics and mm. perception and a lot of uh, my short films and then, uh, that I've made and then other features that I watch, I'm really drawn to, to stories about people who um, you know, want to be someone else or be perceived as someone else and the kind of like the extremes that they're willing to go through in order to find that new identity. Mm. And this story was like the most extreme version of that, obviously. Mm. So the main interest was, um, was really like like exploring a subject who, uh, or try, trying to understand someone who completely changed who they are. Mm -hmm. And then, so like sexuality and religion was secondary, mm -hmm. um, but, <clears throat> but I am interested in that as well because it's just, uh, there's still such a huge debate, at least in America, about the kind of divide between Christianity and homosexuality, even though there are plenty of gay Christians, mm -hmm. but you know, the majority of the country uh, definitely still sees being gay as either a choice or as something that if it's not a choice, you might want to change. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is kind of <clears throat> allowed me to explore all of these complex issues in, in one film. Okay. Yeah. Um, so before shooting, how did you approach it? Did you just do some like research and read, read a lot of articles, books? Um, yeah, can you talk about that? Maybe? Yeah, I read, uh, it sort of started with a lot of online research. I, I read everything that Michael wrote and then also did, you know, kind of looked into um, stories about other ex-gays and... Who converted, or like, or like who kind of like became extreme Christians or like religious people? Well, no, because there's, there are so, this, this is a, such a unique story, like most yeah. of them are the other way around. It's the, you know, Christian pastor who right. is caught being gay and then forces himself to be straight again. Mm -hmm. And so stories where like, almost every other story started with the person not having a happy gay lifestyle, whereas Michael was a happy out gay man. Mm -hmm. So that's why his, this, it, it's, it's the opposite of what we're used to hearing. So, um, but yeah, we read about, you know, ex-gays and uh, ex-gay therapy, even though Michael did not do that, mm -hmm. but just out of curiosity, um, a lot about queer theory, uh, you know, and, and, and read a, a bit more on Christianity because I was raised without religion and mm -hmm. I know the basics, but mm -hmm. definitely I wanted to really dig deeper. Mm -hmm. But the real story and script that I wrote came from meetings with all the real characters. Mm -hmm. So I met mm -hmm. Michael Glatz himself at his Bible school in mm -hmm. Wyoming, mm -hmm. which, which was a pretty intense experience. Um, no way. At the time, he was very anti-gay. The, the film has actually allowed, it's helped him realize that he should not be that way anymore. So it's, there's that actually a very wow. happy ending to wow. the fact that we made the film. But at the time, he was very anti-gay, and he knew that Gus Van Sant and James Franco were involved, but didn't know who I was. So for me to show up and for him to realize that the director is gay, obviously, that was a little weird for him. Mm -hmm. In what way? Like, how did, you, how did he approach you? He was definitely sizing me up. Like, he was like, like oh, what's, what's going on here? And then <laughs> he was I was checking you out. <laughs> Probably not anymore. But like. I could tell if he was checking me out or sizing me up. I'm not okay. sure. Or maybe both. Okay. <laughs> but I could tell he was looking like, oh no, like, are they going to make a movie that's going to vilify me? Because mm. <clears throat> that movie could easily be made. Like, we could make the film that shows this guy is being crazy, lying to himself, and you know, it, it could be a, a film to prove that he's wrong. But we, we meeting me, Gus and James, from day one, from over three years ago, first sat down to talk about doing this film, and the goal was always like, wouldn't it be cool if we could make a balanced film that's not judging him, not vilifying him, but really trying to understand him? Like, why did he change? How did he become the exact thing that he was fighting so hard against for 15 years of his life? Like, how did that happen? And you, know, you can do that, Non, you know, without judging, but with still having a point of view, mm -hmm. because a Christian director would make a totally different movie. Of course. But um, you know. So how do you understand him as a person? Or how did you, in the end, what conclusion did you come up with? Like, what 
did you have like explanations or like um, arguments why he changed or like before you started shooting? Well, the main thing I was after was uh, I, knew there, I knew there wasn't just one simple answer that made mm. him change. So I wanted to find out, like I wanted to gather all the clues mm. and put them together and present them and kind of let people make their make up their own mind. Mm. And for me, it was you know his parents died when he was young. He has this, he had this immense fear of death. Mm. When he thought he was dying at one point, which we show in the film. That he, is interesting. I th what does that mean? I was like thinking about that so much. Like these heart attacks, or like, not a heart, but like these um, just symptoms, like really extreme symptoms of like, physical symptoms, you know, in the end. Yeah. What, what yeah. Yeah, he was just, I, I, you know, I, even though his, <clears throat> his father did have a heart condition that was genetic, so he could have had something, but. Inherited, yeah. I just saw it more so as it was like the stress and anxiety and fear of, about having no uh, idea about the afterlife just mm -hmm. threw him this, into this downward spiral of fear, depression, anxiety, yeah. stress. But and, again, everyone has to face that. Like, we all have to face that. Yeah, and that's why so much in the film is actually very relatable. I mean, mm -hmm. people, a lot mm -hmm. of people are like, why would I want to see this movie? Like, why would a gay person want to go see it? This guy mm -hmm. ends up straight. But there are a lot of, like, very relatable themes. I mean, yeah. we all have yeah. thought, like, what if we die? And it's as though you never existed. It's, ter it's terrifying. Yeah. Um, and religion gives people that comfort. And, you know, I could see, it, I, I understood, you know, even though I didn't agree with him, I would sit, when I sat across from him and saw him genuinely say, you know what, like, I was not having a good life, and then I found religion, and now I have comfort about yes. where I'm going, mm -hmm. and now I'm happier than ever, and in his mind, he has to be straight in order to follow that yeah. path. I don't agree with that. That is interesting. But yeah. it was, as I'm sitting across from him, I realized, I could do this as a balanced story because I'm looking at him, he's only human, and who am I to say that he's wrong? I don't want him to tell me that I'm wrong. So I'd say, okay, you know, I don't agree, but he's telling me that this is how he is now, and, I, and we just have to accept it. Yeah. Um, so how did you end up, like, directing this, this project? I know, it's crazy, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. I think it's great, and it's amazing that you just show this story that happened to us, an individual somewhere in the United States um, and that you made a film out. It's, it's, it's amazing, but it's, we all know it's, you know, filmmaking is complex and challenging and it, it takes a lot of people and money to finally realize things. And uh, yeah. I guess you had two very important, you know, names and influential that definitely people helped. that helped in a way. But, yeah. No, it's very hard. Even, even independent films, um, with names, they're, they're still hard to get off the ground, mm. and especially if there's any queer content, it's mm. still it's still it's an issue. Still an issue. <clears throat> you know, with, yeah, with the so. occasional exception. You know, even when, you know, when Brokeback Mountain was made, and I know that, that financing-wise, it was considered like, you know, this film's probably going to break even, so all the deals were done to mm. be very like low, and then it goes on to make 150 million dollars. Mm. Even with that, people are still, you know, afraid of queer content. They don't know who to exactly market it to. If it's mm. only going to play with, within the gay community, it's a smaller market. It. But um, but I came to it. I've just this is what I wanted to do since uh, for as long as I can remember: storytelling, directing, writing. Mm. And I started off as a set PA in 1998. Just mm. kind of like worked on a bunch of films. Uh, decided to go to film school to make my own films. Mm -hmm. um, made short films, a bunch of music videos. Started writing scripts, and you, you get to that point to where you're like ready to make a feature, and you just have to fight and find a way until it happens and prove to people that you can do it. And I am very fortunate that James loves working with um, emerging artists and first-time directors. Mm -hmm. You know, he likes to be a bit of a mentor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, without him, the film, you know, it never would have been made because Gus believed in me, James believed in me. I wrote the script and they read it and they were like, okay, this is a real movie now. Mm -hmm. But we still had to convince producers and financiers and agents and James had my back the whole way. So that's mm -hmm. really how I was able to direct this movie. Mm -hmm. So how was the experience directing like your first feature length? Was it different from your short or like music videos? Or oh yeah, big time, yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I also, in the interim of, of developing projects, I was editing other people's movies, which is okay. such a great way to learn how to direct, to, to learn about everything. You can watch everything that's working and not working. So I felt so confident and ready going into it. Good. But of course, you still like, you're never going to be prepared for a first feature. I mean, we were like fully union, so to be thrown on the set with like, I don't even know, the crew was six, 60 something people, you know, to be in charge of this full crew and all these union teamsters in New York State where we shot. 
you know, it was definitely intimidating, very surreal, but again, it was, it was such a dream come true that I was just, whatever obstacles we had, which were a lot, a very tight schedule, tight budget, really hard to find locations where we shot in New York. So it was a lot of like, a lot of just learning how to make things work, uh, how to overcome obstacles without freaking out. You know, like we, a few times we would see, we'd lose a location, like an important location the night before we were shooting there. And it's like, okay, well you could have a breakdown and cry, or you can be like, okay, that sucks. Let's find a new one, like, let's go scouting right now at 1 a.m. and find a new one. Mm -hmm. And so it's really like learning how to like balance everything. I mean, it was just, phenomenal learning experience and, and, and working with uh, such established actors as James and Zach uh, and Emma and Ch I mean everyone but to work with those kind of actors that's when you're like wow this is what it's like to make a real film because like they film. know what they're doing yeah <laughs> so what's following now for you what's coming what's next well there's actually a uh, a script I wrote with a friend of mine before this that's also a, a somewhat controversial true story uh, that I now have, you know, it was hard to get off the ground before and now people are interested in it. Okay. So hoping to do that next and I'm holding off on the details for a little bit. Okay, so time. no content. Not even yeah. one word? No, okay. Uh, I can just little... say it's about, um, it's a very fascinating true story about, uh, about a, 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 a literary hoax. So it, it deals with, um, also with identity and perception and people who are trying to become someone else in order to like learn who they are. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you as a filmmaker always want to make queer films or like queer related films or is that important? Not at all. I mean the, the next one has some, some uh, a kind of queer storyline. Uh, I think it's, it's something like as a queer person and director it will always influence my work in, in one way or the other but um, I, I'm definitely excited to you know make something completely unexpected. I mean, I keep, I keep half joking about like, oh, maybe my third film will be like some big DC comic thing or like a Fast and the Furious action adventure or like who knows, as long as, long as it's a really great story with great characters, um, it, it doesn't matter to me if there is queer content or not. Uh, cool. Thank you so much. Great. Enjoy the rest Thank of the you. festival. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs>